organizers for inviting me this fascinating conference. Today I want to talk about the fifth anomaly, symmetry breaking and gaplessness. Uh, this is based on the work with Clay Cordova, uh, which is upcoming, hopefully soon. <coughs> so let me start from reviewing the fifth anomaly matching. The fifth anomaly is a, a quantum modification of global symmetry transformation law. The fifth anomaly matching means that the fifth anomaly calculated in the UV of an RG flow and the IR of it should be e equal. <coughs> it is often computable in UV even if the IR physics is unknown. So therefore, uh, it is very useful to constrain the RG, uh, IR physics from UV data. <coughs> For example, uh, the pure SU2 Yami theory at theta equals to pi have a um, particular anomaly found by uh, Gayato Kapustin Komagotsky Zyberg two years ago. And in this talk, we will find <coughs> that the, this anomaly gives a new constraint in, in the IR physics of this theory. Okay, so the central question in this talk is that given an uh, anomaly, what is the possible IR <coughs> behavior? which matches the, the uh, UV truth anomaly. So if the truth anomaly is non-trivial, the IR cannot be completely trivial theory. There should be some degrees of freedom to match the UV truth anomaly. If the, the IR degrees of freedom is massless, then the IR fixed point is a CFT. But uh, maybe the IR degrees of freedom is topological, in that case, the IR fixed point is more subtle, non-trivial TTFT. But the latter option is not always available. For example, for the familiar uh, triangle anomaly coming from this triangle Feynman diagram, the anomalous world identity implies that the three-point function of the current operator J is, non is non -zero, non zero at the separated points. And this behavior uh, can, can only be reproduced by a CFT in IR, so the IR cannot be a TTFT. When the truth anomaly involves a discrete symmetry, then we can always uh, match the truth anomaly, any truth anomaly, by just breaking the, the, just spontaneously break the discrete symmetry. This is not uh, interesting. So it's more interesting to ask that whether there is a symmetry-preserving TTFT which matches a given anomaly. So in this talk, I'm, I always assume that we are preserving the symmetry in the Lagrangian level. So when I say pre the symmetry is preserved, <coughs> it means that symmetry is preserved in the vacuum. <coughs> OK, so in two dimensions, this symmetry-preserving TTFT is not possible. This is uh, just because that there is no interesting TKFT with single vacua in this dimension. So the, if the, there exists a non-trivial truth anomaly in UV in two dimensions, then the IR physics must be gapless or some discrete symmetry is spont spontaneously broken. In higher dimensions, the situation is different. And a good example is a three-dimensional time reversal times fermion parity mixed anomaly uh, classified by the, uh, Z16. And, and this anomaly is carried by the uh, n copies of Majorana fermion uh, if the number, of a, number n is not, not 0 mod 16. And this classification correspond, uh, is associated with the topological superconductor in the condensed matter context. So of course, this um, anomaly can be matched by this gapless Majorana fermion, but it, it can also be matched by a time reversal preserving TKFT, which is um, SON level N. And this uh, SON level N Chan Simon theory, and this theory doesn't have manifest time reversal <coughs> symmetry, but it have a quantum time reversal symmetry coming from level rank duality I wrote. And Actually, this um, time reversal, quantum time reversal symmetry have this G16 anomaly. 
depend, depending on n module 16, as found by these people. Kay. Moreover, in dimension greater than two, any unitary finite zero form symmetry anomaly in bosonic system, this is zero form is just means the, just the ordinary symmetry, then the, this written and one way written paper constructed a symmetry preserving TKFT. And this construction is recently uh, generalized to uh, certain classes of fermionic anomalies for the unitary finite uh, ordinary symmetry by these people, uh, including myself. So I can say that most anomalies for the uh, ordinary symmetry in dimension greater than two admits symmetry preserving TQFT. But there are two uh, important remaining situations. One is uh, the global or discrete anomaly for the continuous symmetry. So this is the uh, anomaly for continuous symmetry, but it's not coming from the Feynman diagram. And the other, another situation is that when the fifth anomaly in, in involves a discrete center symmetry, or in the terminology introduced but in this uh, guy at the cover screen, the uh, the one form or higher form symmetry. So the, the question is that can we find a clear sufficient condition for a uh, fifth anomaly to rule out the possibility of symmetry preserving TKFT? And the answer is yes, we found uh, a, a clear sufficient condition for this to happen, but but that condition is rather complicated. So instead of uh, presenting that, I, I'm going to give a concrete consequences of the claim we obtained. So there are two situations. The one is a continuous symmetry case, and the other is discrete. For continuous uh, symmetry case, uh, there are two um, important examples. One is the Witten anomaly, the other is parity anomaly. So Witten anomaly is an um, a non perturbative anomaly for the continuous group G, and it, it exists when the pi D, the, the D homotopy group of G is non trivial, where D is the space time dimension. So, for example, pi 4 of SU2 is Z2, and the corresponding with the anomaly is carried by a, a single var fermion in the fundamental representation in 4D. And we could argue that there is no symmetry preserving TKFT matching this Witten anomaly. And the same conclusion is given by uh, this paper, including myself, but we gave an um, independent argument. And in this case, because the symmetry is continuous, so the breaking it doesn't give, uh, also gives the gapless mode. So there's, for this anomaly, there's no possible gapped phase. And so for, thi for this uh, fermion example, thi this conclusion is kind of uh, obvious because there is no uh, symmetry preserving mass term we, we, we can be written with this bar fermion. But the fact that the any theory having this with the anomaly cannot be gapped is uh, quite remarkable in my opinion. Okay, so the 3D party anomaly is a mixed anomaly for the continuous group G and the term reversal. And it, it, it is carried by my Arana fermion in 3D in the minimal representation of group G. And so it is anomalous because the, this my Arana fermion requires a ill quantized Chan Simon counter term for this group G to preserve the term reversal. And so in this case, uh, under some technical condition, for the group G, um, there is no symmetry preserving TKFT matching this party anomaly. So the SU2 satisfies this condition, so there is no uh, symmetry, pres the time reversal preserving TKFT matching this uh, anomaly, party anomaly. So if the system have this SU2 party anomaly, as long as the time reversal and SU2 is preserved, um, 
the, the IR needs to be a CFT or have a two vacuum breaking time reversal. On the other hand, SO3 doesn't satisfy this condition. And indeed, the parity anomaly for SO3 can be matched by a symmetry preserving TPFT, which is uh, U1 level 2 Chan Simon theory. So these were the examples for the continuous symmetry. The important example for the discrete symmetry case is the SU2 and mu at theta equals to pi, uh, which is I mentioned earlier. And so for this case, uh, this Yamis at theta equals to pi have a time reversal symmetry because of the 2 pi periodicity of theta. And this time reversal times the, uh, have a mixed anomaly with the Z2 center symmetry of SU2, found by Gato Kapstein, Pomagotsky, Zaibov. And uh, we, we, uh, we could argue that there is no symmetry preserving TQFT matching this uh, anomaly. The conclusion for this uh, concrete, concrete example is that there is no confined gap phase with single vacuum for this theory. The possible scenarios, therefore, are gapless and having CFT or uh, have a two vacuum breaking time reversal or having a deconfined gap phase. And uh, the second option is considered to be plausible in in the zero temperature. So this, is con this conclusion is consistent with the conventional wisdom. OK, so in the rest of the talk, uh, I'm, I'm going to give you the argument to for this uh, no symmetry, preser symmetry preserving TQFT claim. OK, so let me first uh, review the center symmetry of SU2 Yamu theory. Center of the C2 is Z2, just coming from the minus one. And <coughs> so any uh, local operator is not engaging variant. Local operator is, by definition, not uh, charged by this Z2. But the Wilson line in, say, fundamental representation is charged under this Z2. Importantly, the Wilson line is also the order parameter of confinement. So therefore, the confinement can be defined but by just the preservation of this center symmetry. So this center symmetry is a symmetry in the generalized sense. So there is a char corresponding charge operator Q. And <coughs> so, so this charge operator Q is just an analog of charge operator uh, for the ordinary symmetry, but in this case, the since the, this center symmetry is actually a one-form symmetry, the discharge operator is defined on uh, co-dimension two uh, surface sigma two inside the four-dimensional um, space-time manifold. And in, in this uh, particular model, this charge operator can be defined by demanding uh, that the holonomy of the gauge SU2 is minus one when the measured along the circle uh, going around the, the sigma 2 we, on which we put the charge operator. And this is a generalization of the first twisted boundary condition on torus. So with this definition, and if the charge operator encircles the multiple Wilson lines, it counts the number of the Wilson lines mod 2 and give us a sign depending on the even or odd of number of the Wilson lines. So this is why we, it's legitimate to call this charge operator. Okay, so in the context of the uh, fifth anomaly, it is very important to think, think about the symmetry twisted partial function, which is just a partial function on, on some compact manifold with but with the uh, charge operator is inserted along some non-trivial cycles of the manifold. Okay, so this partial function is defined by <coughs> the path integral over the connections with modified uh, holonomy constraint. This is um, the two two nothing but the two twisted boundary condition. 
And as the group found um, in, uh, under the presence of the symmetry twist, there can be a fractional instanton. And the fraction is controlled by, in this case, the number of the intersections of the symmetry operators we inserted. Like this. So if we have a theta term at theta equals to pi, the e to the minus s here is a real number times this factor. And therefore, the passion, twisted passion function is real if the number of the intersection is even, and it's pure imaginary if the number of the in intersection is odd. This is the anomaly found by the Gaiotto Kapsky covariance because desirable two years ago. Namely, um, if there's no uh, symmetry test is present, then the partial function is real as demanded by the, the term reversal symmetry, but it's <coughs> pure imaginary if the number of the intersection is odd. In other words, the time, re time reversal action on this twisted partial function gives a um, sign, anomalous sign, depending on the intersection or inter number of the intersections of the symmetry of uh, the charge operators inserted on the manifold. So this is the anomalous transformation law of the uh, SU2 Yamu theory at theta equals to pi. So can this behavior be reproduced by a symmetry preserving TTFT? That is the question. So to be concrete, take, take a concrete manifold for the, for, for the major manifold pitches. Here I take S2 times S2. And I, I put the, the twist like this. So I put the two charge operators each wrapping each S2. And so this is the anomalous transformation law. And the number of the intersection is clearly one. And importantly, I can take time reversal to be say the reflection along with the horizontal axis, which makes the whole configuration invariant. So substituting this into the anomalous tr transformation law, we learn that the, function the twisted partial function on this particular con configuration is zero. So is this zero compatible with symmetry preserving TTFT? And to answer that question, we need to know that what the symmetry preservation means in a TTFT. So the charge operator must be, must be exist and non-trivial in IR theory to match the fifth anomaly. Um, but here, we want to uh, assume that center symmetry is preserved. And as I said, that's equals to the confinement. And so the Wilson line it have an area law. And if the IR is TTFT, that's area low line operator is massive and we don't see. So the discharge operator that doesn't have anything um, uh, corresponding line operator, the recent line is gone. So it looks at, like say that the charge operator is uh, trivial, but thing is, th thing is not that easy. Uh, this, con this transparency doesn't immedi immediately mean that the charge operator is trivial in TKFT. Instead, it implies that there is a boundary condition of this operator with which we can open up a hole to the small disk-shaped disc hole uh, on the operator without changing the passion, passion function or twisted passion function. So, Let's apply this operation on this uh, twisted partial function we are interested in. So if we do that, well, maybe this picture is better. Um, so we can op open up a hole on each uh, charge operators, and we can enlarge the, the hole because it's topological, contracting the charge operator to a point to the intersection point, and this, in, this contracted charge operator with boundary condition defines some uh, local operator. 
But here, uh, I also assume that the time reversal is preserved. So the time TKFT have only single vacuum. It means that th there is no non-trivial local operator in the TKFT. So this X is ha have to be some multiple times unit operator. And further, this um, coefficient should be a phase coming from the fact that this is invert the charge operator is invertible. And so the absolute value of this twisted partial function is equal to the absolute value of untwisted partial function on S2 times S2. And for this, I can prove that th this partial function is strictly greater than zero using the unitarity. So we have shown that this twisted partial function in the symmetry preserving TKFT is non-zero, which contradicts with the mu v uh, anomaly. So, so we have shown that there is no symmetry preserving TKFT matching the, the anomaly carried by uh, uv SU2 uh, Yamis theory at theta equals to pi. So there is no confined gapped phase, and the possible scenarios are these three. Okay. Finally, let me uh, briefly comment about a uh, continuous symmetry case. So for this case, it, the important fact is that the TK, TKFT has a discrete ex extended operator spectrum coming from the finiteness of the Hilbert's, Hilbert's space dimension. And this means that the symmetry or the generalized symmetry in TKFT is discrete. And, and it also means that there is no non-trivial symmetry or generalized symmetry twist of the, fa the faithful symmetry of TKFT on the d-dimensional sphere, where d is the space-time dimension. So on the other hand, for the continuous symmetry, there, there can be a non-trivial background on SD. So the faithful symmetry background for TKFT cannot mimic such a uh, non-trivial continuous symmetry background on SD. So if your UV theory have a uh, anomalous transformation law on the ST with some continuous symmetry background, then it cannot be matched by a symmetry preserving TKFT. And the examples are, as I said, the Witte anomaly and parity anomaly. Okay, summary. So the Twift anomaly sometimes forces that the uh, IR theory is either a gapless or some discrete symmetry is spontaneously broken. So the question is when it happens. And one example was that SU2 Yami theory at theory equal to pi. We have shown that there is no symmetry preserving TKFT matching the, uh, the UV anomaly. And it, it constrains the I, IR physics of this theory. And th this argument can be generalizable using the language of the generalized symmetry or higher form symmetry introduced by Gail Kopsin, Zyberg, Willett. And the conclusion is that if you have an anomalous transformation law on the products of two spheres, then that anomaly cannot be matched by uh, symmetry preserving TKFT. Another example for this is the SC2 adjoint QCD with two wire fermions, uh, which was studied extensively the last year. And so in, thi in this example, if we assume that the IR is confined and, and gapped, then this actual symmetry must be broken down to Z2. And lastly, the con I briefly mentioned the continuous symmetry case. It, the continuous symmetry anomaly is even if it's uh, non-perturbative, non it is very hard to be matched by a symmetry preserving TKFT because of the inherent discreteness of TKFT. So outlook. <laughs> So the, the condition we found shouldn't be a perfect condition. I don't know the, the necessary and the sufficient condition, a good necessary and the sufficient condition for the, <coughs> the, the existence of symmetry preserving TKFT matching proof anomaly. And one example is this anomaly. This is just a discrete version of U1 times gravity squared. And another question in this vein is that given any two theory with the same two anomaly, is there an up and down flow 
RG4 connecting these two theories. This is considered to be true by many, say, condensed matter physicists, but I don't know how to show it. Okay, I, I stop here. Thank you very much. So, any comments or questions? No? All right, thank you again. There is one? Yeah. What do you know about higher values of N uh, for this transition? You, you talked about SU2. Ah, well, this for any even N, the conclusion is the same. So in, in your argument, um, you have two twist line. Uh, then you also use the time reversal symmetry. So this two twist line is the center Z2 twisting line, right? Yeah. So this, if you turn on this two twist line, sort of you gauge this center Z2 symmetry. So if there's a mixed anomaly between time reversal and the center Z2, then if you gauge one of them, the other somehow cannot be preserved. But you also assume that there's time reversal out of this twisted probability function. I'm sorry, but what is that? Ma maybe I don't understand the question. So, so you, you use the time reversal symmetry for this twisted uh, partition function. Right? Yes, yes. So, but this twisting is uh, some sort of gauging this center Z2. I'm not, I'm not gauging. So gauging amounts to summing up the pos po all possible insertions uh, of the symmetry twist. And I'm, I'm just um, thinking about t taking uh, one particular a twist. So, so this is more like the inserting a background. So I was wondering whether you can always uh, still use time reversal symmetry for these twisted uh, partition functions. Um, yeah, so one ma manifestation of this uh, time reversal time is uh, center symmetry anomaly is that if you gauge the center symmetry, then time, time, time reversal symmetry is gone. That's one, one manifestation. Okay, so before ending, there will be two comments from organizers. Is there any other question also? No? All right, thank, let's thank the counter again. <laughs>